Owing to the resistance to the evolution of thought, including the <coughs> modern creationism, uh, evolutionists were sort of forced into uh, defending evolution and trying to prove that it, or proving that it existed, proving that evolution is a fact or not a theory, the explanation of evolution and the search for the underlying ideas was somewhat neglected. And for instance, the new book that is now in press in basic books uh, by myself, the title of which is Evolution Explained, is doing precisely that. It tries to explain evolution. I say in the first part, I don't need to prove it again. Evolution is so clearly a fact that you need to be committed to things like uh, beliefs in the supernatural if you at all are in disagreement with evolution. But evolution is a fact and we don't need to prove it anymore, but we must explain why it happened and how it happens and how it goes with, with uh, general ideas. And one of the things that I discovered in my work on the philosophy of biology is the following. And it surprised myself and I've published it but nobody has yet reacted to it. When it comes to the physical sciences, any new theory is based on a law, on a natural law. Uh, as several leading philosophers have stated, and I agree with them, there are no laws in biology. People use the word law for biology a great deal, but laws uh, have to be uh, without exceptions. That's why Papa has the uh, thing that his theories are falsified if there are exceptions. Uh, laws must be beyond space and time, they must be not specific. Every generalization in biology is specific, restricted to certain part of the living world or anyhow to localized situations and restricted in time. So the uh, generalizations of biology virtually never, except in functional biology, which as I say is closer to the physical sciences. So the question then is, well now if theories in biology cannot be based on laws because there aren't any laws in biology, how can you say you have theories and how do you know that your theories are any good? And that's a very perfectly legitimate question. Well, of course our, generalis our theories are based on something solid and that solid is concepts. And if you go through the theories of evolutionary biology, you find that they're all based on concepts such as natural selection, uh, competition, a stalker for existence, female choice, male dominance. You can go through that just hundreds of really ecologies consists almost entirely of basic concepts and it's those basic concepts on which the theories are based and then you can say again well but then how do you know they're true and there the answer again is you can only test it by continuous testing and you have to use historical narratives method and base your see whether your concept and the consequences from it are being confirmed when used as the basis of historical narratives. Darwin, Darwin published The Origin of Species. The leading Cambridge University geologist was Sedgwick. And Sedgwick owed a critique of the Darwin's origin. And in this critique he said, uh, how can Darwin be so unscientific to use chance in some of his arguments when we all know that everything is controlled by God. Now, uh, who was more scientific than Darwin or Cedric? And 
now, this was in 1860, uh, now 140 years later, uh, of course we see how uh, much this was, how subjective this was, how much it was colored by the beliefs of that time. And it's the same with historical narratives. Once you are used to this technique and it works every time you, you uh, apply this method, of course it's very acceptable. You don't question it anymore. Darwin changed the foundations of Western thinking. All sorts of things that had been accepted by everybody, he challenged, and we now agree he was right and his contemporaries were wrong. And let me just enumerate some of them. One of them, of course, is, you can call it essentialism, as Popper did, or you can call it typological thinking. It's the kind of thinking that goes back to the Pythagoreans and to Plato, which says that the world consists of a limited number of classes of objects, and each class of objects uh, has a definition that is fixed, and the entities that are included in this class uh, only seem to differ from each other. This so-called variation is only, they are only accidents, and the reality is the underlying ideas, as Plato called it, or essence as the uh, scholastics, or natura, as the scholastics called it, or the definition, as some modern call it. He showed that this essentialism, this typology, was absolutely wrong, and he introduced, and that's the important thing he did, although he didn't realize it, and he didn't, he often fell back and, uh, and didn't fully follow it up. He invented the concept of the biopopulation, which is that in the living organisms, all assemblages are populations in which every individual is uniquely different which is just the opposite of racism. And uh, he applied this quite consistently to the acquisition of new adaptations. He did not apply it consistently to the origin of new species. But that's a very special question. Let me